That is my mother. Her only recording. Very few memories of my parents. <laughs> it's hard to grow up without parents. What happened to them? They were killed by the Contras in the beginning of the Civil War. They were part of the first literacy campaign, teaching peasants to read and write. <laughs> this is the only thing I have left from my father. <laughs> I thought that he was a teacher. He was. But he was a sandinista. He used to go help the peasants harvesting sugarcane in the fields. Every weekend. So what about these sandinistas? Well... In short, we had a dictator for two decades, financed and supported by the U.S. The Sandinistas fought them for years, and little by little, the people joined them and created a popular revolution, deposing the dictator. And what happened? And it became a new country, with free health care, free schools, literacy campaigns in the country. But, unfortunately, you uh, the Sandinistas are what your country called socialists. The Sandinistas didn't want their money and resources to go to U.S. corporations. They wanted to go to their people. So, your actor, President Reagan, ordered the CIA to put together an army called the Contras to overthrow our government. And this created a civil war that raged on. Your CIA got entangled in this mess and realized they would need more money to continue, but it was a secret war that the American Congress did not want to finance. So, the CIA decided to sell weapons to Iran, which was forbidden by your Congress and by international law. And when your CIA needed more money, they decided to sell drugs, cocaine to be precise, in your country to finance the contrast. You read way too many novels. And you don't read enough. It's all documented. Reagan authorized the CIA to finance an army to overthrow a government with money from weapons and drug trade. Carter first, and then Reagan after him in full force. See, that is what I'm trying to explain to you. People here do not know what's going on in their own country. You are educated by Walt Disney and Fox News and Star Wars. You live in a bubble. Your country has been responsible for the removal or assassination of dozens of leaders around the world. You want names? Patrice Lamumba, Prime Minister of Congo, Salvador Allende, President of Chile, Mossadegh, Prime Minister of Iran, all democratically elected, all dead because of a CIA-organized coup. Your country has initiated massacres in Indonesia, Guatemala, Iran. Okay. Sorry. I get worked up. That is why my parents died. It's hard for me to talk calmly about it. You don't believe me, do you?
that is what's left from my parents' car. After the Contras killed them, they came to my grandmother's house and tossed it at her feet. She knew immediately what it meant. You know, what's confusing is that for the last 30 years, I've been living in a world where we were the heroes. And what you're describing is completely different. It's like two totally different worlds. Do you really believe in this system in which you are a banker? Yeah, of course. I mean, why wouldn't I? Your system remains only because it has exploited and plundered dozens of countries and oppressed and starved millions of people around the world for decades. You know, I've worked in foreign markets. I was an international trader. When traders are supposed to influence foreign markets. With the international banking system, it's very easy to cripple the economy of another country. And that's what I did for 10 years. And I was rewarded for it. You know what international bankers call themselves? Masters of the universe. You're kidding, right? No, it's true. We spend our time bidding on the economies of countries. Buy Brazil, bid half a million on Pakistan, sell Argentina. Oh, man. How did you put a hole in the bank? Master of the universe. Well, uh, it was during the time when Argentina was falling apart. Uh, unable to repay its debt and heading for elections. And we were supporting a candidate. Who's that, we? Well, the government, the U.S. government, of course. Of course. And? And the bank suddenly decided to buy Argentine debt in massive numbers. And they felt for sure that our candidate would be elected no matter what. And since I had had so much success doing the same thing with Brazilian debt, they called me in and put me in charge of the operation. And? And they put enormous pressure on me to buy an incredible amount of Argentine paper. At the time, I was thinking it was the best thing to do. I knew that if I was successful, we would make so much money that I would be king of the bank. How could you make so much money if the country could not repay its debt? Well, you buy the debt from the original lender at 10 cents on the dollar, and then afterwards you sue the government to repay the loan at face value. I see. And what happened? At the time I was so caught up in the gamble I was master of the universe that I continued to buy without authorization, I mean, signing the papers myself, even after the bank had stopped the project. So, how come you didn't make so much money? Well, the wrong guy was elected. Depends for who. Maybe. You decided not to repay the debt. Never happened before. Wasn't it the best thing he could do for his country? I think I uh, understand why you've come to hate this country so much. Well, my parents' death was a real turning point for me. It made me open my eyes and wonder why. Why all this violence? Why all this death? All this misery? 